about the Bible, people will be named Baal, whatever, or cities will be named Baal, Parazim, or whatever, because they're, they're, they've been just so much have gone after these false gods. I mean, Ashtaroth was literally the name of the city of um, Og, the king of Bashan. One of the, one, of the, one of the cities that he owned that was in his realm was Ashtaroth. And it's because they worshipped a false god, so they named an entire city after their false god, their false god worship. And um, that's, that's how much they were into that. And God was like, no, we're not going to have any of that. And oftentimes you'll find, too, within, as the children of Israel took over places, they're going to change the names. You know, it used to be called Luz, now it's called Bethel. It used to be called this, now it's, you know, and, and start changing some of the names. And um, getting rid of some of the, some of the remnants of, of the Baal worship. Verse number 14, the Bible says, And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And it, that, that phrase is used twice in this chapter. The anger of the Lord is hot. That means God's really angry. I mean, you think of, you know, someone getting angry and their face getting all red, right? You get hot. You start to sweat a little bit when you get really angry. God's anger got hot with the children of Israel because that does, that makes God hot. The Bible says, uh, uh, our God is a consuming fire in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews um, 13. I forget the reference now already. You come up here and, and, and preach and you'll see what I'm talking about. You, I know it's already happened on Christmas, on Christmas or New Year's Eve with a couple of you. It's not as easy as it looks. The Bible says our Lord is a consuming fire. And the Bible also says that, uh, that God is a jealous God. Jealous because he doesn't, want him, he doesn't want the people worshiping anyone else but him. And it makes sense. I mean, think about here. It says they bowed down to them. Just imagine what it must be like for God, the creator. Created, I mean, everything that you see. The, the, the amount of complexity that's in life itself. That's that, that everything that's wrapped into you think of. And this is why the Bible says that the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. When you look at how complicated everything is that exists in this world. I mean, I was just explaining to my kids the other day about, uh, you know, because they were talking about it was real foggy. Right. So it just kind of explain how, the, you know, there's there's water molecules in the air. And, and they already know a lot of this stuff. We were talking about it. And I explained to them how, you know, God built in his own filtration system through, through you know, water goes up in the clouds. It comes down in rain. It travels. It picks up minerals, goes into the seas. It evaporates. It goes back up in the air. And through this whole process, any contamination and things that are, that are, that are um, you know, done either by man or, or whatever, gets filtered out so that we can still have a renewable source of, of water and life. And, you know, and, and that's just like one really small example. And you think about the way God created our bodies to deal with disease and deal, you know, deal with so many different things. And the process is to, to transfer energy by consuming food and making all of your body parts move together and work together in unison. You know, there's so many things you just say, how could there not be a God? How can there not be a God that created this amazing world and these plan and, and everything in it? You have to be a fool to not see that there's a God that created all these things. 